Okay, I guess that's my cue. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our July 19th meeting. We are in session at 4.04 p.m. Um, and I will call us to order. Uh, first item is the AV check. So, Elizabeth, I saw you. Uh, are you can you see the interpreter? I can, I can, yes. Excellent. Uh, Leslie, are you here? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I received regrets from Leslie earlier today. That's right. Yes, I saw that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Asia. No. Okay. Nicole McDonald. Hello. Hello. Uh, Rochelle, yes. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Jackie. Here. Okay. Councillor Russell, are you here? I'm here having a great day out here in Cape Breton. Excellent. Councillor Nico De Gammon, are you here? I am, Mr. Chair, but uh, the, the green envy monster is uh, alive and well because somebody's in Cape Breton and I'm not. Well, somebody's in Newfoundland and I'm not, so there we have that too. There you go. Uh, Samantha. Lucky you guys. Okay, I believe that's everyone. So can I have a motion to approve the minutes that were circulated? And do we have oh. any changes to those minutes? I will move the approval of the minutes of June 21st, 2021. Okay. I can second that. All Mr. right, thank you. Uh, make sure yeah, I'm just, I have a wonderfully annotated agenda that I follow. So uh, I'm just kidding myself here. All right, uh, all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Okay, then the minutes have been approved. I think so, I'm not here. Uh, what's my agenda? I seem to have misplaced my agenda tab. So one minute, please. Yes, it, it is my family that's in Newfoundland today, today and uh, because I'm me, I can't get there because not a whole lot of Newfoundland is accessible just yet. Okay. And we're back on track. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, so that the motion has has, has been carried. Uh, approval of the order of business. And do we have any additions or deletions? I need a motion to approve the order of business. I move. Thank you, Jackie. All those in favor? I will second that, and I'm in oh, favor. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Um, any opposed? Okay. We have no business arising from the minutes. Now, uh, conflicts of interest. Have we any of those today? Okay, meeting proceeds. We have no deferred business, is that correct? Yes, it is. Excellent. Correspondence petitions, do we have any of those? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The clerk's office did not receive any correspondence. Uh, petitions? Nothing at all? Uh, thank you, Chair. The clerk's office did also not receive any uh, petitions. Thank you for that. 
Okay. And there are no items brought forward, so we can go right to discussion. Uh, we have Leah Perrin, planner for the regional planning, is speaking today on a regional plan review. So I will pass the floor to Leah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I will just share my screen here. Hopefully. <laughs> Here we go. Um, okay, are you able to see that? Yes. Great. So uh, good afternoon uh, to the committee. My name is Leah Perrin. I'm a principal planner with regional planning and today I'll be introducing our work on the regional plan review. Well, I have the pleasure of leading their presentation today. I just wanted to uh, you know, acknowledge that we have a core project team. I have uh, Katie Frolic and Shiloh Gempton uh, with me today. And uh, the regional plan review obviously includes a, a huge amount of work from um, staff across our organization and just wanna acknowledge that their, their work as well. So we're here today because we're reviewing the regional plan, which means we're evaluating our land use policies and making sure that they represent the direction that council would like to set. We're contemplating how the municipality is physically organized and growing. As part of our engagement program over the past month, we've been consulting with committees of council, advisory boards and internal staff teams, and as well as stakeholders and the broader public. And some of that stakeholder consultation is, uh, is ongoing. We invite everyone to visit the project website uh, which is our one-stop shop for all information on this plan review. Uh, so the website is www.shapeyourcityhalifax.ca slash regional dash plan. And we did have a public survey up there uh, that closed on Friday, um, but the website is still home to a wide variety of information and resources on this project. So just to take a step back and make sure everyone understands the regional plan, what it is and what it does, it is a strategic document it's the first planning document that was adopted after amalgamation that provided a region-wide vision for land use. It was first adopted in 2006 and provided a comprehensive outline of how growth and development uh, should take place until 2031. So the regional plan is uh, powerful in guiding the municipality's planning and decision-making. It's a high level policy document. And so it does a few different things uh, as that policy document, it provides direction for planning at the regional and community level. So the regional plan, it sits above our community or secondary plan level documents and above our land use bylaws, and it sets that region-wide policy intent. So where something is important enough that it should apply everywhere, uh, the regional plan can set up land use regulations that would be applied region-wide. So that's most uh, often been done for our environmental regulations, as an example. Um, so for example, setbacks from water courses, those policies sit in the regional plan and then the regulations are rolled out in every community's land use bylaw. Uh, it can establish the municipality's intent to do future research programs or studies. So for example, the 2006 regional plan called for a series of transportation priorities plans, uh, including a road network plan. And then ultimately that became the integrated mobility plan. So with the adoption of the integrated mobility plan, there's, there's a bunch of ongoing work related to it that will get its own direction in the regional plan. And finally, uh, the regional plan identifies where there's needs for different types of programming or opportunities to partner with community or other levels of government. So for example, our mobility network is managed by different levels of government and can be supported through partnerships with other groups across our community. Uh, the regional plan, as an example, supports the Rural Transit Funding Program, which provides grants to community-based transit services in rural areas. Uh, this presents the progression of the regional plan over the past 15 years. So in 2006, we approved the original regional plan with a 25-year horizon, and we intended to review it every five years. Uh, the first review, which was called RP plus five, it was started in 2011. And so we adopted a new plan in 2014. And we started working on this review in 2020 with a two year work plan. So we're aiming to complete the review in 2022. And the end of the plan horizon is 2031. The themes and directions document was recent re recently released as our first major deliverable of this review. 
So it outlines the key ideas and planning issues that we'll address in the review. So it's a chance to step back and ask everyone, do we have this right? Are we headed in the right direction? And then the feedback that we receive will help, uh, help us to provide focus and direction for our work uh, during the rest of the review. So the themes and directions document includes 11 themes. Uh, they're considering the regional scale first, building healthier and more complete communities, reconsidering employment and industrial lands, transforming how we move in our region, social planning for community well-being, celebrating culture and heritage, integrated community facilities and parks, enhancing environmental protection, leading through action on climate, imagining HRM into 2050 and beyond, and assessing the impacts of COVID-19. Uh, there is a specific accessibility section in theme five in the social planning section. Uh, however, we recognize that accessibility is actually a cross-cutting consideration that's relevant to all themes. So the regional plan has an important role to play in our work towards making HRM a city for people of all abilities, ages, and backgrounds. Regional Council recently approved the accessibility strategy. Obviously, uh, your committee would be very familiar with that work, I'm sure. And um, the regional plan review will support that ongoing work. So the accessibility strategy includes several objectives that relate to planning policy, uh, such as reducing transportation barriers to individuals with disabilities and improving accessibility to built environments for individuals with disabilities. Our planning and development regulations address a wide range of physical accessibility issues, including access to buildings, the design of the buildings themselves, how our streets and sidewalks are organized, the location of barrier-free parking, signage, and wayfinding. So our strategic planning can also support accessible tr active transportation routes, active tr um, accessible taxi services, and accessible transit. Our planning policies can support how we run our public engagement activities in an inclusive and accessible way and direct that we partner with community to learn from others' experiences and help to improve the work we do and the services we deliver. So in the next couple of slides, I'll just hi highlight a couple of examples where accessibility is really important in our policy. The Integrated Mobility Plan, or uh, it's often called the IMP, it contains a region-wide vision for mobility and directs future investment in transportation demand management, uh, transit, active transportation, and the roadway network. The IMP represents a significant shift in the municipality's approach to transportation. The movement of people rather than vehicles is at the heart of the plan, and accessibility is uh, highlighted as a key consideration in that plan. Since the plan's adoption in 2017, a team of staff across municipal departments has been working to move the IMP's actions forward. Our work on the regional plan review will be instrumental in making sure that our region-wide mobility policies are consistent with the IMP. So we'll adopt the, or sorry, update the uh, transportation and mobility chapter of the regional plan to reflect the policies and actions of the IMP and its regional approach to transportation planning. From an accessibility standpoint, uh, the regional plan will include policy that supports the IMP's complete streets approach to designing, operating and maintaining our streets. And another uh, interesting thing for land use planning is uh, we regularly have planning applications for individual developments. And in the past, they've typically required uh, what are called transportation impact assessments that have only really in, uh, assessed the impact of vehicles. The IMP calls for adopting multimodal level of service guidelines that would assess mobility impacts for all users. So the regional plan will be able to set up sort of that high level direction and then and the work would sort of be uh, done through uh, these more detailed projects. A uh, key goal of uh, the regional plan review is to revise our policy to support creating equitable, complete communities. Uh, this requires an understanding of the lived experiences of the diverse residents that call HRM home. The municipality must continue to develop an understanding of the effects of existing policies that disproportionately affect historically underserved and underrepresented groups. Public participation during planning projects provides an important opportunity for the municipality to hear from residents. However, traditional engagement tools often only reach those who are already engaged or have the loudest voices and have left many others out of the conversation. So alone, these tools produce narrow represent representation in terms of demographics, perspectives, and experiences. So through our work, we're looking at ways to improve our engagement practices, and the regional plan review will make sure that the plan supports these efforts. And we're looking to include the Accessibility Advisory Committee and the Diversity and Inclusion Office in the review of those engagement practices. 
Uh, so this is our key contact information. Uh, again, our website is shapeyourcityhalifax.ca slash regional dash plan. Our email address is regionalplan at halifax.ca and our phone number is 902-233-2501. We're happy to take questions and comments from you today. We've been suggesting to the committees that we've been meeting uh, that you may wish to submit a letter to us with your comments after this meeting or we would welcome comments from individual community members or sorry, committee members as well. Um, any questions or comments that we hear from you today will become part of the public record. Uh, the published deadline for comments was this past Friday, but we're happy to accept any written submissions a little later. And we're certainly happy to stay involved with your committee as we move through this uh, review process. So thanks very much, and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs> We can let Liv, Liv, do you have anything to ask or comment on? You mean comment in, in relation to the presentation that happened? Um, yes. Because I was just curious about uh, the taxi system, just because I had an experience last week with uh, taxi services. Um, I usually have uh, cabs at the stand right out in front of my home on Spring Garden. Usually there's there's taxis right there so I can access them easily. Um, but I went out last week and there actually wasn't any there. So I wasn't really sure sort of how to access the uh, taxi. So I sort of stood out on the sidewalk and waved in hopes that they may um, pull over. So... Sorry, Elizabeth just froze for a second. I'm just checking to see who phoned who. So I ended up actually getting a taxi driver by just sort of uh, waving um, to them. And then they looked at me and then I gestured to them. Could they get someone to phone and get someone to come? And they nodded at me and then someone did show up. So I'm assuming they understood me and that happened. But I didn't sort of have any other way that I was able to um, access to the taxi. Like I said, usually they're just um, right there at a, at a cab stand, but there, there wasn't any there that day. So it sort of changed on how I would be able to uh, approach them. So, so I'm curious if So I'm wondering if you'd be able to narrow some street areas so that we could have taxi stands more frequently throughout the city in particular. So the street being narrowed and then having the extra sort of space allotted for the um, taxi stand along the side so that people can just walk out and they'll be sitting there and you can access them so you don't have to sort of wave them down. So if anyone needed a taxi, they could just go to the taxi stands in certain places throughout the city in downtown specifically, and then you could get into a taxi and just go. Um, that was one thing that I had. And then um, I'm, I'm not sure if we're only focusing sort of on the downtown area at this point, or if we can speak a little bit more broadly but at the um, different intersections. I know sometimes in the intersections, if you're driving, you can't actually see pedestrians or other cars because of things that are sort of blocking the intersections. So specifically if you're at a red light and you wanna turn right and you can't really turn right because there's like a building right there on the corner or something sort of blocking that area. Um, then you're not able to kind of like scooch the car forward enough in order to turn right on the red light when, where you're allowed. So then I usually end up having to, uh, to wait for the light to turn green in order to do that. So I'm not sure if there's any way to sort of, I don't know, make it a little bit safer. You know, there's more buildings going up downtown now, so that makes it happen quite frequently. And then a lot of times also too, there's signs that may be there or trees or bushes that are right on corners. So that makes it really challenging to, uh, to turn right. So it's not really vis visually accessible, I guess. So I don't know if that makes sense to everybody um, here, but that's another issue that I, that I struggle with. 
And I know that hearing people general, as a general rule can hear people coming or other vehicles coming. So that might be a little bit of a different uh, scenario for them. Um, whereas for deaf individuals, um, you know, they can't, they, they can't hear that. So that's it for now for me anyway, just my two comments for now. Okay. Thank you for those. Yes. Okay. Nicole, you are next on the docket. Do you have any questions or comments? No, thank you. Okay, Rochelle, have you anything to bring up regarding this plan? Thank you. Um, uh, no questions. I, I just want to say that like I as a committee member would be interested in sort of like ongoing information as this plan rolls out. And yeah, I would just love to continue to hear about what's going on. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay. Jackie, have you anything you want to bring up? Yes, on? Mr. Chair, please. Um, I guess one's a comment and one is a more of a question. Being from the rural area, um, Leah, I, I guess I, I always think about how does rural fit into this? And although I believe when you're talking about a regional plan, you're talking about the Halifax region that also includes. So just um, more of a reminder that there is the rural area to consider. And I know it's not something right now in planning, you're looking more within the city. However, I think it's something that you may want to mention somewhere. Um, it gives those of us in the rural area a little hope in terms of some changes. The other was um, just a question very quickly, please, is how do you plan to do public engagement? And I, I saw that as one of the, uh, the areas that you're looking at. Great, thank you. Uh, so through the chair to the committee member, um, uh, I will, I guess, just mention uh, on the rural topic. So, I mean, the regional plan is huge and uh, I was sort of focused in on the accessibility component today. And, uh, but your point is well taken. And part of the scope of this regional plan review is actually setting up for uh, a future sort of rural plan. So we've been focused on the regional center plan in the last little while. Um, but when, when that is completed, we'll be moving on to the suburban and rural areas. So uh, if you visit our website, we do have a rural planning issue paper um, that is uh, sort of trying to get at some of the, the issues for rural um, for rural communities, but it'll be the very, it's the very first steps of, of getting at that. Um, I, can everyone hear me? My video at least has frozen. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> I just didn't want, yeah. wasn't sure if I was talking into the void. Okay, um, so uh, on the question of public engagement so far, I mean, obviously we've been challenged uh, with the with this round of engagement and that we're in uh, virtual, but there's um, we have uh, a website. We've been doing a lot of stakeholder engagement. We had a survey that was uh, pushed out on social media and it's the first round of engagement. So as we come back with another draft uh, or with a draft plan, we'll be doing another round of engagement. Uh, I also, I guess, would mention that um, a lot of the work that we're doing through this regional plan review is um, is pulling up uh, all the work that we've done on priorities plans in the last sort of five years. So the Halifax Green Network Plan, the Integrated Mobility Plan, uh, the Halifax Climate Action Plan, uh, the Sharing Our Stories, Culture and Heritage Priorities Plan. So all of those plans have had really robust public engagement uh, programs and we'll be bringing forward a lot of that work. So um, sort of background work has, has been done and this is uh, trying to get at some of these higher level issues. but. Um, we're always open to hearing suggestions for better public engagement. So if you have them, um, all ears. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Councillor Russell, do you have anything to bring up? Thank you. Um, I, I guess I've got a couple of, of comments. Uh, one of them is in relation to what Liz had mentioned about uh, uh, getting a taxi and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with uh, taxis from an accessibility standpoint. I have typically called them and have had whatever the experience I've had with them. Um, but do they have means, I, I would think that they would have means uh, through TTY, through text message, through 
an app through some other way. And, and I don't know if, if that type of thing is possible to request a cab to come to you. Um, we do also have uh, a small but uh, I think growing amount of Uber and things like that in the local area where you should be able to do that. If that doesn't exist within the taxi industry at this point, would it make sense to um, look at that for consideration for licensing or something like that? The second comment was, uh, we are un unrelated to the regional plan. We are going through uh, the Red Book updates at this point. And the Accessibility Advisory Committee is listed as one of those committees that was consulted. We had the report on it. I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that it didn't get lost, that the Red Book is being updated and any consideration from uh, this committee should uh, be re-engaged and if anybody would like to talk about that i'm i'm open to talk about that and i guess a question for andrew is uh councillor dago gammon and i have been entering uh into the chat in zoom that uh we have uh been interested in speaking and i wasn't sure if you were familiar with that or um or or not uh this is a way that we have normally been uh communicating on council uh, to indicate that we would like to speak. So I will leave my comments there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Russell. I have a speaker's list provided by Annie. So that's how I've been going through the uh, order of speakers. So okay. I have Super. here. And unfortunately, or fortunately, you're near the end. So uh, that's why it took so long to get to you. But Councillor Digo Gammon, you are next. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. No worries at all. Um, the, I guess I have a couple of questions, but maybe the, the first one came about Leah, and thank you for the presentation, by the way, is when you said this is urban and looking at suburban and rural next, I, I was, and maybe you can clarify for me, and maybe I'm getting mixed up between center plan review and regional plan, but I thought the regional plan review was the entire HRM. So as such, uh, it is rural, suburban and urban, uh, but you can clarify that for me because, and maybe I just misheard you or something, but um, so that's one question. And I guess the other one is, and I know the survey is closed, but I'm, I'm really concerned about how the team, and maybe you can give us some language to this, some words about it, how the team, made sure to welcome alternative communicators into the conversation. So a person who use a non-traditional communication style, what did we do to be proactive to make sure that their voices were able to be captured in it? And to the, the other comment around rural, I think a lot about persons with disability who live in rural HRM and don't have access to the internet. So were there mail out surveys provided to those persons or to those communities? Um, did we engage? And I, I think I remember from a community planner, um, a community development person um, in district one specifically, I know that they were you know, in their communities, they were talking about it. They were telling people, here's how you can um, uh, engage with it. But um, I'm just wondering how we're gonna do that. And then, if it has happened, have we been able to capture any of the data to make sure that our proactive approach to engage those persons actually worked? And then if there are stats that say that we didn't, how can we use that to better engage future, um, to, to better plan for future public engagements? So I think that's it for now, but uh, Councillor Russell, when you mentioned the Red Book update, Absolutely, I'm all ears. Uh, as a new councillor, I need to learn a little bit more about that. And I know this is uh, you know, a, a longstanding committee, so um, more information, the better. Thank you. That's it for now. All right, thank you, councillor. Uh, Great, thank you. I can take, take yeah. some of those questions. I am having uh, some technical difficulties with my video, it seems, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, so uh, on the, the region wide versus urban versus rural versus suburban. So yeah, certainly uh, the regional plan is a region wide planning document. Um, 
but as I guess I mentioned in the presentation, it sort of it, it sets up um, this sort of secondary, it lives above and sets up our secondary uh, planning documents. So we have been working um, for uh, years now on the center plan process, which is the, um, the Dar like Halifax Peninsula and Dartmouth and and Circumferential. And that, that will be, you know, brand new planning policy and uh, land use bylaw regulations for the regional center. So um, the expectation one deliverable of the regional plan review will be that we set up that those next processes for the suburban and rural areas. And that's at the secondary planning level. But the, the regional plan does, as, as we have said, set, set up this sort of region-wide planning policy. Um, so it's it's the more region-wide stuff. And then when you get into the, um, the detailed uh, work at a you know zoning level, um, that's when you get into the secondary plans. Uh, in terms of our engagement, I mean, we, uh, we were entirely virtual. I mean, we kicked off our engagement sort of in the throes of lockdown. Um, and so uh, I, I suppose the alternative engagement, um, you know, we are working uh, with, with our virtual options. We um, worked with uh, uh, Melissa Myers, who I believe is on this call, um, sort, of, sort of ask about what, what, you know, options there are to make sure that our um, virtual engagement methods are as accessible as possible. I, uh, I don't know how successful we are. We're working with Shape Your City, which is the, the HRM wide um, piece of software and it has sort of accessible at varying levels. I don't know whether um, Kathleen or Shiloh who are on the call uh, have any feedback. I don't know if we've, they've been more uh, into the, the uh, email or you have a, we have a direct email obviously and they've read many more of those um, things than we have. We'll, we'll know a bit more. Um, we're just starting to dig into our survey results now. So we'll know a bit more with the demographics that we got um, as we dig into those results now that the survey has closed. And um, I, I'm hopeful that we'll get some feedback uh, as we move forward. And, and as I say, there will be certainly opportunities for um, additional public engagement as we move through the process. So um, we should be able to to report on those things. And, um, you know, if there's, if there, we're still conducting stakeholder engagement now, so we, we may, um, you know, there's still lots of opportunity. And I actually, hi everyone, uh, my name is Kathleen Frelick. Uh, I'm a planner with the regional planning team um, and I can actually build on Leah's answer a little bit as well. Um, so in addition to our sort of virtual uh, engagement, we did make a point of ensuring that we included um, phone communication as an option, um, because obviously not everybody has reliable access to the internet, comfort, com comfort with the internet, um, various different things. So we did have, um, uh, we were able to receive ma uh, letters by mail, we were able to receive uh, emails. Um, as well as phone calls. So we tried to be open through a, a variety of different tools. Um, and then we did work closely with the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, as well as all the community developers at, at HRM to try to reach out to um, the local networks um, for, for different community groups uh, all across the uh, municipality. Okay. That, uh... Thank you for that addition, Kathleen, Kathleen yes. Uh, and thank you, Leah, for your presentation. Uh, I have nothing to add because I believe all of my questions have been answered by the previous speakers. So thank you for that. Um, and now we are on to the work plan review. Okay, Annie, you have the floor for this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, yeah, I just wanted to provide everyone with uh, with an update on the work plan. Uh, so at our last meeting, we we passed or the the committee passed the the work plan to uh, pass along to the executive standing committee. And just am happy to report that the executive standing committee unanimously approved the work plan at their July 12th meeting. So uh, all you know, like I've been dotted, T's are crossed, and you are uh, good to go as a committee with your uh, approved work plan moving forward. Um, 
this doesn't, you know, change really anything in terms of process. I just thought that it was a bit of great news to share and that, um, you know, this will be the, the document that I will certainly be referring to as uh, we explore, you know, asking different business units or um, external organizations to come in and speak to the items that are um, a part of your work plan. And uh, another quick process thing as well is that I will just continue on agendas moving forward to keep the work plan as an information item at the bottom of your agenda so that members always have uh, that document to refer back to when we are meeting. Um, aside from that, uh, I'd be happy to take any uh, questions on kind of the, the work plan approval process at large. Um, but yeah, just wanted to share some good news. Thank you, Annie. So let's go around our table. Nicole, do you have any questions? No. No? Okay. Rochelle, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't know if this is related to work plan necessarily, um, but I know on our work plan there was some stuff about like education and um, and that, I mean, that was a big one that sort of stuck out for me. Um, and I'm wondering how much like back and forth information we can have with the like the health authority. I feel like there's a pretty big like lack of accessibility sort of in the health authority. And I was wondering if like there is some crossover or if this is totally separate. Um, yeah, and if there's yeah anything related to that that like this committee can be of like useful or like a service to. Um, yeah. Just a thought I was having recently. <laughs> Thank you, and um, through you, our um, chair to the committee member, um, that is a different jurisdiction uh, in terms of, you know, like municipal provincial uh, health is largely governed by uh, provincial authority. But um, absolutely, if there is a desire for the health authority to, um, you know, to see if they would be willing to send a representative to speak to the committee to, uh, so that the committee can learn a little bit more about what is, um, you know, kind of what their accessibility mechanisms look like within the health authority, I would be happy to uh, certainly explore uh, reaching out to them um, if that's the will of the committee. Thanks. Okay, Jackie, you're up. No, I'm fine, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Russell, do you have any questions or comments? At this point, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Councillor Deagle Gammon, are you burning to ask any questions? I'm good now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Okay, I'm at the bottom of that page. Liz, do you have anything to add to our discussion? Yeah, related to uh, contacting the Nova Scotia Health Authority, um, there are two levels to the Nova Scotia Health Authority, and we have four zones. and the capital health. And so that's not at the provincial level. And we have to remember that Dr. Strang said that they were at the, just the general provincial level. And so they weren't, involved at the local level. And so that was interesting to me um, when he was talking about that, that they weren't involved. So capital's not involved in the community level. So they're not involved with us. So does that make sense? Yes, it does. And thank you uh, through you, Chair, to the committee member. Thank you for that clarification. And um, yeah, I uh, absolutely will take that into consideration when, you know, figuring out exactly who is the best kind of person or the best area to reach out to to get some information back to the, back to the committee. All right. Thank you, Annie. And I believe you will continue with the annual town hall update. Um, Mr. Chair, I just see that um, uh, we have a hand up in the in the top row here. Um, 
Tracy, uh, Tracy Grant has their hand up. I'm not. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry, I must have hit that by mistake. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. These things happen. I think we're all still working our way through Zoom, even a year and a half into this situation. Yes, now, Annie, you have the town hall update. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and uh, just uh, another kind of verbal update here as to how things are going on uh, planning some of the pieces for the town hall. Um, and I, I would, of course, like invite um, Melissa, uh, our accessibility advisor, uh, to you know, jump in if, if uh, she has anything that she would like to add here. Um, but just wanted to say that we've, we've started having some conversations internally around what the, uh, what the planning of the town hall is going to look like. Uh, Melissa and I have had a few conversations and I also had the opportunity to speak with uh, a former legislative assistant for the committee, uh, for the accessibility advisory committee who was the legislative assistant for I think like between like two to four uh, town halls that happened in in the past. Uh, so uh, we have had you know some some kind of good conversations uh, to start planning. And um, I a meeting with the uh, Halifax libraries is in the works as well. So hopefully uh, by the time that we meet in. Um, by the time that we meet in August, we'll have some um, like a breakdown of some information to provide the committee as to you know what a hybrid model could look like and what uh, libraries in particular could help facilitate a virtual and in-person meeting space. And uh, yeah, so and then the last piece. And that I just wanted to, to highlight is um, that we are, you know, from my understanding from the committee was that we were looking for a date probably between like late October to mid November. And um, I, I'm not sure if, if committee members feel, you know, particularly swayed one way uh, or the other in terms of uh, a date right now, considering it probably feels maybe a, a bit far away at the moment. Um, in the past, I think that the uh, the town hall has often taken place on the evening um, of a weekday. And I was just wanting to gauge whether there would be interest in continuing that model or potentially looking at a weekend afternoon. Um, and just wanted to kind of put put that out to the committee to see uh, what uh, what some opinions would be on that, because that will certainly help guide the conversations that um, Melissa and I will have uh, with the library. So um, yeah, that's all, all I kind of have to, to offer on that piece, but uh, happy to take any additional uh, questions that folks may have. And also if uh, Melissa has anything that she would like to add, um, all, all ears all around. Okay. Melissa, do you have anything to add to that uh, update? Thank you, Mr. Jill. No, I echo everything that Annie Hill said. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Questions on the issue. Nicole, you're up. Do you have any questions? No, no questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Rochelle. Anything to add? Yeah, um, I think that like with the hybrid model sort of being put in place, this might not matter as much, um, but just to um, sort of like consider the possibility of snow, which I know is hard to plan for, but just sort of to be aware that like snow and weather events make access like infinitely harder. Um, so just to sort of keep that in mind, although I think that some of that might be mitigated by like a hybrid model. So folks who like maybe aren't able to be there in person because of like mobility stuff um, could hopefully more easily sign in online. Although a very intense weather event would also maybe affect internet usage and things. So yeah, just that kind of thing around, is it more likely to, <laughs> is it more likely to, um, be a big weather event November or October, it's hard to say, but that's something that's just to keep in mind. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, as for the snow, we could be in snow next week, so who knows? Uh, Jackie, do you have anything to add to this? 
No, Mr. Chair, except I would like to thank Annie and Melissa for the work they're doing around this. Yes, Thanks. I, I would echo that. Yes, thank you. Councillor Russell, do you have anything to add to the discussion? Uh, thank you. I, I, if you're looking for an opinion on an evening or a weekend afternoon, I'm in favor of both evenings and weekend afternoons. Um, and if you're looking for snow event dates, the only date that I have is that we got the first snow event in 2020, uh, 2020 to 21 on November 3rd. So earlier in the time frame that you have mentioned would be uh, more preferable. Excellent, thank you. Councillor Deagle Gammon, do you have anything to I do, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Paul, how do you pick these facts up? Like, where do you come up with this is the first snowball? Anyway, um, I'm, I'm if, just- if I, if, if I can answer that. We, sure. we as councillors, uh, get emails from the snow department, from the HRM <laughs> snow department, and I just kept it. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, my question is, um, do we, um, I'm wondering about the availability of Accessibus, so that if persons, people do want to participate in person, in any way, does the plan incorporate availability of Accessibus so that people can get there and can get back home? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, great point, uh, Councillor. I am um, at this point that that isn't something that we've had like a, a like a firm conversation on. I would say from a planning perspective, but absolutely a, a consideration to um, have in place. And I'm not sure if maybe Melissa might have a little bit more more insight on on that front. Um, I don't mean to put to put anybody on the spot, um, but uh, absolutely it will be a consideration around planning for sure. But I, uh, the reason I ask is that you know in in my previous life experiences, um, planning for something like this to be able to get excess of us takes an awful lot of notice. And so sometimes if the conversation with Halifax Transit could be had to say, this event is coming up, what kinds of uh, things can we put in place that would encourage people to be able to, to know that they're gonna have um, ability to get there and back. So thank you. Okay, Melissa, do you have anything to add to Annie? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So one thing, that I would uh, say to all this is I think this is why it's important that we advertise this event, event well in advance so that any users that are using Accessibus can book Accessibus. We never know who's going to show up. It's, wel it's welcome for everybody in HIM. So I think the more notice that we give the community that there is a town hall meeting happening, and then I think it's going to be easier for people to book because of us. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And I will, I will echo her comments, re accessibility of the excessive bus. Uh, they have been a challenge, so uh, that should definitely be taken into consideration. Uh, Liz, you are up for questions or comments. So just related to or to the town hall, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's hard to uh, say. It's quite a ways away yet. October and November seems a ways off. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with whatever time, weekends, evenings, the Monday, the Friday, that makes no difference to me. Yep, that's it. That's it. All right. Uh, I have a request for comment from Tracy. You. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and thank you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and Darren may be able to help me with this, but I believe in the past, when we've had the accessibility um, 
annual meeting, we have had those conversations with transit to see if we could make arrangements. I know, Darren, you might recall this when we had it at the new Citadel High School, um, we made some arrangements and worked with transit. So if that's something to think about, um, it, is, it is something that perhaps um, my team might be able to help with follow up. But Darren, you might be able to help me on that comment too. I don't know if my camera's on there or not. I think it is. Yeah, so we have made arrangements through uh, Halifax Transit in the past for additional buses and special service runs and that. We've done meetings at um, Citadel High, Bloomfield when it was open. We've done uh, uh, C.P. Allen High School out in Bedford. So we've done quite a bit of different spots, Cold Harbor Place, and we've always made arrangements to have the buses come. A couple of our committee members uh, relied on uh, the excessive bus to get to the meetings as well. So yeah, those are all things we have done in the past and can do again. Thank you, Darren. Is, are you satisfied with that, Tracy? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. You. Uh, the only thing left on the speakers list is myself and I would uh, echo the call for an uh, earlier that than November call because I have a very strong, if it's snowing, I'm not going policy. So either hybrid or October would uh, be my suggestion, but uh, whatever works, works, I guess. All right. Uh, all right, now it's time for committee members. I don't see any in here. And is that correct, Annie? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, that is correct. All right. I skipped over staff, staff update, but I don't see any there either. Do we have any added items? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, there were no added items during the order of business. All right. That concludes that order of business. And what we have next is our date of the next meeting, which I believe is August 16th. Is that correct? Excellent. Could I have a motion to adjourn? I move. I move. This is Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you all for coming this afternoon and um, coming virtually. Um, our next meeting, as we just said, is August 16th, and the committee adjourned at 4.56 p.m.